electric potential of multiple charges. To get the electric potential at a point in space due to multiple charges, you must first find the potential at that point due to each of the charges. Then algebraically add those potentials together, taking into account their positive and negative signs. This interesting configuration of equipotential lines, which are in blue, is created by a positive charge somewhere over here and a negative charge somewhere over here. By adding the voltages due to each charge, the equipotential lines have a different structure from those due to just one charge. The equipotential lines near the negative charge, so over here, are the most negative, and the ones near the positive charge are the most positive. Somewhere between them is the zero potential line. Let's find the work required to move a small positive test charge over here in an electric field. Place the test charge in the field generated by the large Q over here. If you let it go, it will move in direction of the electric field lines away from the big plus Q. It's going to move up like that. But what if an external force over here is applied to move the charge towards plus Q? The force is doing positive work on the system as the charge is moving in the same direction as the external force. The work done can be related to the change in electric potential energy by using this here. Voltage or electric potential is the change in the electric potential energy per charge. Now, the work external equals the change in electric potential energy, which then equals Q delta V. That comes from this expression here. If you were to multiply both sides by Q, and that's Q times vo voltage final minus voltage initial. The work done on a positive charge by the external force will increase the potential energy of the system. The work moves the charge to an area of greater electric potential, right? You have a greater electric potential closer to this charge. Consider a negative charge placed in this electric field. In the absence of an external force, it will move towards the positive charge and the potential energy of the system will decrease. An external force is applied to move it away from plus Q. And here's the external force. Use the equation where Q is negative. So the work external is a change in potential energy equals minus Q delta V minus Q VF minus V0. But VF has a smaller negative value than V0 so Vf minus V0 is negative. Therefore, the product of negative Q and V minus V0 is positive. The potential energy of the system is increased. Compute the electric potential, that is the voltage, of three charges at the origin. We want to find the electric potential right here due to this configuration. And here's the information about the charges, and we'll work through this on the next several slides. First, we'll find the electric potential of charge 1 right here at 0. Well, how far away is it? It's 2 meters. You just count 1, 2. You put in the charge here. And again, this might be new. NC, nanocoulombs. Nano is 10 to the minus 9. Here's Coulomb's constant. The voltage is KQ over R. We have 33.3 volts due to Q1. Now we find the electric potential due to charge 2, and that's 3 meters away, which we're also told over here, but it's nice that it matches the chart here. And we have V2 is KQ2 over R. We plug in value of K, here's Q2, and make sure you put the negative sign there, the sign counts, divided by 3 meters. The nice thing about the math here is 10 to the 9th times 10 to the minus 9th just cancels out, right? That gives you 10 to the 0, which is 1. Divide 9 by 3, you get 3. Then it's 3 times 9.7. So you can either do it by hand or a calculator. Make sure you have the negative, and it's negative 29.1 volts. Finally, we calculate the voltage due to Q3. This time, we have a positive charge, so we're going to get a positive voltage. That's what, 9 meters away from the origin, and we get 2.10 volts. Finally, we find the net electric potential at x equals 0 by calculating the algebraic sum of the individual potentials. Negatives count. 
So the sum of the voltage equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. V1 is over here. V2 is negative 29.1. V3 is plus 2.10. Add them all together and we get the voltage right there is 6.30 volts. How much work is done by an external force on a 10 microcoulomb charge that moves from point C to point B? We look at the sketch and see our final voltage at point B is 50 volts. The initial voltage is zero. Q is 10 microcoulombs, which is 10 times 10 to the minus six coulombs. We start with our work electric potential equation. We put in the value of Q. Here's V final, here's V initial, and we get five times 10 to the minus fourth joules. We're doing positive work which makes sense because we're going from zero to 50 volts. We're going to a higher voltage. How much work is done by an external force on a minus 10 microcoulomb charge that moves from point A to point D? We write our givens down. V final is minus 50 volts. That's over here, point D. V initial is 100 volts. That's over here. And our charge that we want to move from A to D is a negative 10 microcoulombs or negative 10 times 10 to the minus sixth. So let's figure out the sign without doing any math yet. We're moving a negative charge in this direction. What's the direction of the electric field? Well, the electric field points from high voltage to low voltage. So our electric field, I'll write it down here, is going from left to right. Which way does a negative charge want to move in an electric field? Well, it will move opposite the electric field. So the electron, if there's no external force, and I'll point it up here, that's the way the electron or negative charge wants to move. But we want to move it to the right. So we have to apply an external force in that direction to move it to the right. So we have the force and the direction of motion both the same direction. So we need to put on positive work. So now let's look at the equation. We have work is Q delta V. That's the equation for an external force. If we wanted to know the work done by the field, that would be minus Q delta V. So you really have to pay attention to the signs. So over here, we input everybody. We have the charge of negative 10 times 10 to the minus six coulombs. And it's always V final minus V initial. So it would be negative 50 volts minus 100 volts. Carry out the math and we get 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 joules. So the equation and our analysis up at the top using electric field give the same sign, which is very good. How much work is done by an external force on a minus 10 microcoulomb charge that moves it from point A to point B and then back to point A? What's interesting about this problem is we don't care that we moved from B and then back to A again. We could have moved to D and back to A and gotten the same result. Why? The electric field is a conservative one. So only the initial and final voltages count in the solution. So we see that our final voltage is 100 volts, the initial is 100 volts, and you don't care what happened in between. Substitute in our values. So here's the charge, doesn't really matter. And here's final voltage minus initial, and we get zero joules of work is done.